Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's Chrissy Sawyer here and happy Monday. Um, Newsflash, it's happened. <laughs> the consumer orgy has begun. I was shopping on Friday. That will have been 25th, 26th, 28th, Friday the 25th of August. I repeat August and there are Christmas decorations in the shops. I'm just saying. Let me know if you saw them sooner. <laughs> so welcome everybody. How are you doing? Um, I want to do a quick reading. Um, we have so did anybody feel the shift over the weekend? There was like an untethering. So you may have had lots of energy one day, wipe out the next day, lots of energy the day after. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And and I think when these energy shifts come and they're quite profound and quite deep, there there are, there will be many tests in there. But one of the tests um, in this society might be how you give into it, how you rest into it, how you parent yourself. That's it, how you take care of yourself. So we have two cards on the table for today. And they are very interesting cards. Not what I expected. I thought I'd be speaking to Mercury today. So we have Uranus and Jupiter. So I quickly check the charts. And Uranus and Jupiter are both in Taurus at the moment. Tomorrow, Uranus goes retrograde. And on September the 4th, Jupiter goes retrograde in Taurus. And they will stay in Taurus. Immediately, I get think before you buy. <laughs> Think before you say yes. Think before you get swept up in, I don't like those words. Get it all now scheme. Yeah. I wanted this to be a quick reading and there's loads coming in. Right, so 12th house of Pisces. I'm gonna put those to one side, I'm gonna follow this. I won't be able to stay long, so maybe that I've gotta come back and do a part two, but let's see. Now, when I made that video with Christelle, these four cards came out and they would have opened up another big reading. So I set off, I think it was off camera and I said, I'm gonna save these and see what comes out. But because the 12th house has come out, I want to speak to these. So Neptune, retro, I'm guessing retrograde, everything's retrograde at the moment, so I'm guessing, but check for yourself in Pisces. Wish it and dream it into life and it will challenge you. It's designed to challenge you. If we don't feel challenged, are we truly making change? Saturn, also in Pisces. Saturn still in Pisces, retrograde. North Node, okay. And I also want to bring in, I was, um, Connecting with Mercury at the weekend, because I know Mercury is going retrograde, has gone retrograde in Virgo. Um, and I got a really specific message from Mercury, which was rewriting scriptures, which I found very interesting. Rewriting scriptures. So whatever happened at the weekend was like a... a 
uh, death and resurrection, but it happened really quickly. Um, Mm. So I'm just noticing the energy in me is quite active, quite Mars, quite fire. But when I really look at what's happening in my world, there's no invitation for big movement. And so that could be the difference between pushing to achieve, that's the push, thrive, push, drive, strive program, which is And actually what my body wants, um, and at the moment my body just wants peace and quiet. It doesn't want noise, it only wants a few people. It just wants peace and quiet. It's a quiet time. What is it like for you? What is happening for you? Because it might be that part of an old scripture is running you. When your heart you might not want that. Charcoal. Why am I getting charcoal? So there's something about going back to the elements. Elements, of course, body. Okay, earth, air, fire, water, <laughs> spirit. Charcoal is burnt wood, though. Let's see what else comes out. Let's see what else comes out. Um, what is it? I can't with this. <laughs> okay. This looks like breakthroughs coming for the whole collective. Might come out of the blue, because we have Uranus on the table, and even in retrograde, Uranus is still point. There's the balance point. That will be the balance point between what my environment seems to want from me, what my friends seem to want from me, what my boss seems to want from me, and what my heart wants. So it looks like Jupiter and Uranus are putting something in front of us. It might come out of the blue. Like a... What's that song by Imagine Dragons, Thunder? I was lightning before the thunder. Oh, I can really feel my Mars energy now. It's like this little Kundalini shake is coming up. So you may get energy, and then maybe this kind of old world must spend it, must spend it, must do, do, do. Maybe the lesson is how do you harness that Kundalini and how you integrate it and become stronger and resilient. This feels like the birth of something. Strong and resilient, sorry. Stoic? I don't really like that word either. Okay, so there's my challenge. Look, I'm being challenged with words that I don't really like, but let's just bring them in. Let's <laughs> get me out of the way. <laughs> and interestingly, I mean, this looks like uh, new ideas shoots breaking ground abundance and fecundity and it's coming through in the back end of the year where for those in the northern hemisphere everything gets dark and quiet and starts to dissolve back into the earth the passing away the retrograde season which leads into the eclipse season so if we've maybe set some intentions here, that no longer works for me. 
can. We ping that out to the universe, to a high, through a higher self, as a heartfelt intention. Bring me a higher love. It's that kind of, you know, Venus still in retrograde. Is that all you're worth? I've got the grail coming in now. And equal filling, equal give and take in relationships. Relationship to everything. Humans, animals, nature, food, booze, what takes and what gives. Yeah, so if we've done the work during retro season, and we have eclipse season hitting, I believe, in October. So there'll be two eclipses on the nodes. Then all we have to do during that phase is let go. I'm noticing the last reading was three months, and this is doing the same thing. Okay, I, I'm just, this is a contradiction. So don't expect hurtling change, but change is here on the table. This might be speaking to the frustration. Who of you knows K-N-O-W's change is coming? Like you can feel it in your water. It's not quite here yet. It's not quite here yet. Because the work, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, completely. See, and then comes Capricorn, and we have Pluto in the last degrees, the last degree of Capricorn before it moves to Aqua in January, and then it will retrograde again into Capricorn, and then later on in 2024, it will begin its 20-year journey through Aquarius. So I'm talking about the grail and what feeds, what gives and what, yeah, there's receiving there as well, isn't there? Pouring in now. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. This is the, so this is the victim martyr. This is the victim martyr paradigm of I give and give and give and I don't receive. Are you sure about that? Is it because you're not receiving that you're not receiving? How do you receive love? How do you receive love in all of its forms and expressions? Do you take a moment every time that moment manifests? So there's a lot on the table here. Okay, I'm going to be ambitious. Let's see if we can boil this down to one message so that I can wrap this up quite quickly. Um, I may come back to this reading. Let me boil this down. To what's, what's the chief message here and now? Yeah. Beautiful, thank you. It's really beautiful. Oh gosh, yes, of course, thank you. End of August is, um, I believe, a super full moon in Pisces, okay? So we have all of this Pisces energy here, Saturn, 12th house, Neptune, sacrifice. What are you willing to sacrifice? Because there's a lot holding us, an awful lot, Uranus and Jupiter slowing things down so we don't rush so we can think and plan and listen 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 always listen what does the heart want it might not be what the ego wants and so observing is that you know as kundalini rises because we're coming into the raw creative principle as we rebuild what is coming down and the raw creative principle is going to come from a different place. It's going to come from source, straight through the heart. And when we listen and observe ourselves, observe our whole pentagram. 
and take action on that rather than external prompts, question mark, you'll know it. If an external prompt comes in and it does a something to you that's for you, take it and observe it until you get the wisdom. Yeah, observe. And that's it. Um, oh, let's do one of these. Let's wrap it up with a messenger card. Or two. That North Node is really coming online. Seek your destiny. I mean, we've had that 37, haven't we? Two or three times recently. That's like, that's, that is like Neptune coming through the blueprint. It's like God, <laughs> it's goddess energy. Ten one is that birthing of the light, but it's in the nothing. It's it's in the nothing. Yeah, that's another thing I wanted to say. Is in this opening and closing of different gateways, you may get popped into a pause between gateways where there's nothing. And that might make you push and kick. Nothing you can do. Well, you can. You can go off and create same old, same old and call it something different. Or you can stay in that fire burning within me <laughs> and take a lesson just to harness kundalini and integrate it because we're building here i don't see much go and do it i see the energy's coming in what are you going to do with it what does your heart want I think destiny will come and clunk you on the head. I don't really, I wouldn't guide anyone to go and seek their destiny. I would say if you can sit still and be in the stillness and in the void for long enough, you'll hear it, you'll see it, you'll feel it. You brought it in with you. It's just a case of unlocking. It's unlocking. Fourteen. Fourteen five. It's about communication. It's the higher communication. Oh, I want to share something with you. It's the higher communication. Okay. Destiny will come through your higher communication. You'll know it, but, and there is a but, what comes through your your Uranus, your genius that you brought in with you might come through and conflict with normal, with convention, it will definitely conflict with conventional because Uranus wants to break down convention, conventionality. Okay, so this is practicing strength, the strength. Right, okay, so that's just reminded me. Um, so somebody recently shared with me um, a story about an opera singer trained at Juilliard and this opera singer was trained to project her voice from here. And when I heard this, it was just like, oh my God, that makes perfect sense. Because when I listen to opera, I'm with the angels. It's angelic. I mean, it's like a whole body experience for me. So I started playing with it. So I started with the breath and I built the breath in a this lovely whirlwind in the belly. And then I pulled it up through each chakra, noticing observing what happened in each chakra and I breathed it out of here and the whole top of my head heated up and then I started vocal toning so start with the sound in the belly 
and then pull it up and pull it up. So I've been doing vocal toning for a week now. It's pretty powerful. <laughs> Try it. Vocal toning. Choose your vowel because it will be true to you. I'm not telling you what to do. Build the sound in the belly. Build it in the bass. Start where you like. Okay, make it yours. Uranus, make it yours. Start in the finger. <laughs> okay. Speaky cards. Dopamine. Dopamine. Watch out for any need to get a dopamine fix. Dopamine fix. So in the equation that might look like social media, anything on social media gives us that fix, that being seen, that being met, that can only really be done from within. It can be done from without, absolutely. Um, Yeah, it might be better just to be in the not knowing for a while. And because that's going to figure it's it's only when we're lost that we can find ourselves. It's only when we're lost that we can find our story. But in that moment of lostness, we can divert and seek outwards and be okay for another couple of months, but then we'll get to another lost. I love these cards. Divine Abundance deck, they are the cheekiest deck I possess. So what I was just describing there was doing the same thing. That's karma and what we're trying to birth is dharma, your light, your path, your lantern, on your terms. Okay. There's nothing from a past life that can't be addressed in the current life. So that might be speaking to the Libra, Scorp, Sag season which is normally like part of the washing out, the end of the wheel, coming to the end of the wheel. All right, my darlings, that is it for today. I will be back. Um, thank you for being here. Please like, share, subscribe. And I will see you all again soon. Much love. Bye-bye.